structure that is on the optical fiber dispersion. So these are the learning outcomes. At end of this session, students will be able to illustrate the dispersion losses in optical fiber. Now, before starting to this lecture, just recall how many types of losses we have studied in the optical fiber here. <coughs> so we have studied almost uh, two to three uh, losses which affects the signal while transmitting in the fiber optical cable here. The first loss what we have seen was the absorption loss here. So the absorption loss was the imperfection of uh, due to the atomic structure of the uh, fiber materials. So in which uh, it can be a incentric and the eccentric here. So in incentric we have seen that is the, uh, that is the transition of an electrons from the lower energy to the higher energy state here. So due to which uh, there is a loss of uh, signal in the optical fiber. An eccentric in which the water molecules uh, gets affected uh, in the signal so that is known as the eccentric losses. So after that we have seen the scattering losses. In the scattering losses we have seen the release and my scattering. Uh, the light gets uh, scatter when the operating wavelength is less than or greater than uh, the operating wavelength in uh, release and my scattering respectively. And uh, we have seen the bending losses also that is the macro bending and the micro bending uh, that is the manufacturing losses. So we can overcome that losses uh, while uh, we have to make the new optical fiber. The dispersion loss is a uh, little bit different as compared to the, the absorption, the scattering and the bending losses here. So we'll study now uh, regarding to the dispersion. So let us understand first uh, what do you mean by the dispersion here. So this is the fiber optical cable, this is the core uh, inside which the light is going to be transmitted and this is the cladding here. So when the input pulse we are going to send that is uh, 1 0 1 0 1 0 that is on off uh, of the LED or the laser as a source here. So we are going to transmit this signal. So over a period of time that is uh, when the signal is being transmitted inside the fiber optics cable here. So there is an overlapping of two signals that is we have sent that is the signal 1 0 and 1. So inside this uh, due to the, uh, the refractive index of the core. Uh, there is an overlapping of a signal here. When the output is received at the receiver side here, so the overlap of the pulses will take place. It is indistinguishable pulses. Uh, we cannot distinguish between the 1 and 0. So such cases are also known as an uh, interference, ISI, that is inter-symbol interference. So we will not be able to receive the signal uh, properly at the receiver side here. Okay. So in short, we can say that when the optical signal or the pulse guided into the fiber optics, the pulse gets spread and broaden as it transmits through the fiber here. Such type of occurrence is called as in the dispersion. Okay. So what is the effect of the dispersion? The spreading of an optical pulse limits the information carrying capacity of the fiber. Means uh, uh, your fiber optics will not transmit as the data it should be transmitted here. So how we are going to overcome this, uh, the dispersion losses here. So there are, uh, we will see now, uh, there are the two types of uh, different types of dispersion in the optical fibers. That is the intramodal dispersion and the intermodal dispersion here. Uh, that is the intramodal is also known as the chromatic uh, dispersion which occurs in the all types of fiber means uh, the, it occurs in the single mode as well as in the multi mode here and intermodal dispersion occurs only in the multi mode it doesn't uh, takes place into the single mode because it only it transmits the fundamental mode here. So now in detail we are going to study about the intramodal and the intermodal dispersion here. So the intramodal dispersion is nothing but it primarily depends on the fiber material. So the fiber material used for the manufacturing are the silica and the uh, OH bond like this okay the SiO2 so in that uh, depending on the fiber material again there are two types of uh, intramodal dispersion that is the material dispersion and the waveguide dispersion here so now we will see the in detail what do you mean by the material dispersion here so the material uh, dispersion takes place due to the different wavelength traveling at the different speed inside the fiber here uh, so the different wavelength traveling at the different speed inside the fiber it depends on the uh, the velocity of a light uh, traveling inside the core here as uh, you know that in the step index and the graded index uh, that is the refractive index is going to be changed in the graded index here 
so uh, the different wavelength will be traveling at the different speed inside the uh, fibers here so now we will see the material dispersion uh, that is we have seen that is the wavelength 1 and wavelength 2 is shown here uh, same like uh, this is core and this is the cladding here so how we are going to minimize the material dispersion is that we can uh, minimize by using the wavelength such as uh, 8 to 70 nanometers 30 nanometers and 1550 nanometers wavelength uh, which is also known as the zero dispersion wavelength that is zdw here so if you see only calculate the dispersion losses or the attenuation due to the dispersion so it will be minimum uh, almost it is zero at 870 one, uh, 1300 nanometers and 1500 nanometers but uh, every time we cannot send uh, the uh, data through the light that is which is wavelength of 870 or uh, 1300 because there uh, the attenuation losses due to the absorptions and the scattering is more at the wavelength uh, if you use at the lower wavelength here so that's why uh, we have shifted that that is known as the dispersion shifted uh, fibers here that is will be 1550 so where the dispersion losses is are zero means the broadening of pulse will be less at that time and uh, the attenuation due to the other effects also will be less here uh, <clears throat> so that's why it can be minimized by using such uh, wavelength here uh, when the wavelength is less than uh, zdw that is a zero dispersion wavelength it travels slower and when it is a uh, higher than the zw it travels faster here thus the speed is changed and it is used in such a way that all the waves passing through the fiber will move with the constant speed and hence the material dispersion is minimized here and the, this dispersion will not occur in the single mode fiber here it will occur in only the multi mode fiber that is the material dispersion here okay. so uh, now we will see the waveguide uh, dispersion the waveguide dispersion is caused due to the difference in the uh, index of the refraction between the core and cladding the index of the refraction means at which the angle is going to be refracted here means whenever you are going to incident the light that is a different wavelength that is lambda 1 and lambda 2 so it has been incident at the acceptance cone uh, it is going to be incident at phi 1 and this is incident at the phi 2 uh, uh, so there is a difference in the index of the refraction between core and cladding here so waveguide means which will travels from transmitter to the uh, receiver here which results in the drag effect between the core and cladding portion of the power here so such type of uh, dispersions are known as the waveguide dispersion here so now we will see the intermodal uh, dispersion uh, so now up till uh, now we have seen the intramodal uh, dispersion so the intramodal dispersion occurs only in the multimode fiber okay and uh, so we will see in detail now that is the intramodal dispersion when more than one mode is transmitting through the fiber uh, they will have the different wavelength and uh, will have to take different time to propagate through the fiber here which leads to the intramodal dispersion so this is the phi uh, means lambda 1 this is the lambda 2 which will be received at the different speed and the different time at the uh, receiver side then each mode will be different wavelength with a different speed hence they reach at the end of the fiber with a different time here this results the plus uh, broadening here thus this can be a distorted pulse such a phenomena is called as an intramodal dispersion here so the refractive index for the single mode only the uh, fundamental mode is transmitted so there is no problem of receiving the signal at the receiver side here but in the multi mode whenever there is a more than one mode is being transmitted here so at that time uh, the whatever the signal side is being sent here so due to the refractive index of an core and uh, the angle of incidence so the this uh, lambda 2 will travel with a different speed and lambda 1 will travel with a different speed uh, if it use at the graded index also and the step index and it will reach at the receiver side with a different time and with a different speed here so what will happen it will be the overlapping of the two signals will takes place here uh, and which can be a pulse broadening so such type of things are known as the intramodal dispersion here so as we have seen uh, due to the spreading of light or the broadening of a light in the optical fiber there is a uh, information carrying capacity becomes less here so if you want to calculate that how much is the usable bandwidth so this is an one example we have taken so it can be calculated based on the bandwidth the distant product and this value is also expressed in hertz kilometer uh, if the fiber is having the bandwidth distance product of 250 kilo uh, megahertz per kilometer 
and the length of the link is 5 km that is the length of an optical fiber then the usable bandwidth over the this link can be calculated that is usable bandwidth is equal to 250 megahertz per kilometer that is divided by 5 kilometers it becomes an 50 megahertz so this is the usable bandwidth of an uh, the information carrying capacity of an the fiber optics here so these are my references thank you